Now I'm going to write a provocative statement on the board. So prepare yourself. For an instant, circular motion looks like linear motion at speed v. And to prove it, I'll take a real close look at circular motion. So here we have Hal going by around the circle. So what I'm going to do is get real close and watch him go right by zero. Here we go. And there he goes. So I was looking really close at Sal, and this is what I saw. So did you see that? Just went right across the screen, almost like it was going straight. So here we go, here's our circular motion, and here was Sal, and when you really zoomed in, it looked straight. Now you may say, well, I paused the video and I did a frame analysis of it and I could still tell it was a curve, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you looked at an even smaller region and we made Sal a smaller uh, mass, it would look even straighter. And if we made it smaller and uh, made it even a smaller point mass, it would look straighter. Eventually, it really will look straight. In fact, if we go to a true instant, meaning essentially a separation of time down to zero, it doesn't just look like linear motion, it is linear motion. For an instant, it's linear motion. So when we think about the motion of Sal going around the circle, we can actually assign it a speed, a velocity that changes direction as it goes around the circle. So if we wanted to do our full analysis here, then this would be the origin, and this would be the current position of Sal, and there would be the angle. And we're saying it has an angular velocity omega, but it also has a linear speed as it goes around. So let's see what the relationship is between the, the two. So the relation between the two would be what? Well, let's find it by calculating omega based on what we know. So omega is delta theta over delta t. We know that. And we want to say we know as it goes around, let's think about a full revolution, it goes around 2 pi, right? If we were to think about an entire revolution, it would be 2 pi radians, because we like to work in radians. And what is delta t? So to get all the way around 2 pi, it must go a distance equal to the circumference, and it must take a time equal to the circumference divided by v, right? Because if it's going at a constant speed all the way around, then the time is just uh, the distance divided by the speed. So we could put the circumference divided by v, and that's equal to delta t. Okay. And then you could say, well, what's the circumference? So 2 pi over the circumference is 2 pi times the radius. That divided by the speed v. Right? Oh, OK, the 2 pi's go away. This is why we like to use radians. It makes the formulas prettier. So omega, apparently, is just equal to v over r. This is the relationship between the angular velocity of something that's undergoing uniform circular motion and the speed, essentially the linear speed as it goes around the corner or around around the circle. Omega equals v over r. Now let's see. When we say v here, we mean the speed because you can't the vector v is constantly changing. It's hard to keep up with. So we just want to think about the magnitude of the vector v, the speed. And this would all be fine and we would be done except there's one thing that I must tell you that is very um, confusing, and that is that angular velocity is a vector. It is not a scalar. It's a vector. And you may say, well, which way? Because omega keeps changing, right? Or the, the, the direction of the motion is constantly changing. So we have a special way we represent its direction. Um, the direction is perpendicular. Uh, perpendicular to the plane of motion. Okay? 
So if you think about it, it would be hard to give omega a direction in this plane because you're right. It's changing direction. It's constantly changing direction. The one special thing we can say is let's let omega be this way. And if omega is this way, what that means is the circular uniform motion happens in the plane perpendicular to the omega vector. So if I was going to draw omega, I would draw a vector sticking out of the board. This is how you draw a vector sticking out of the board. It looks like the tip of an arrow. If you think of a vector as an arrow, then when it comes at you, you see the tip. When it goes into the board away from you, you see the feathers. Right? So that's a vector going into the board. This is the vector omega coming out of the board. The only other thing to specify is does the vector omega come out of the board or into the board? Which one is it? And then we follow the right-hand rule. So the direction is perpendicular to the plane of motion following the R, H, R. So we have a lot of right-hand rules in physics, and this is one of them. The first step to doing the right-hand rule is to use your right hand. Okay, I've had many students come into my office sitting there trying to get the right-hand rule to work on some magnetism problem, and they can't get it in tears, and I say, that is your left hand. So here you go, real quick, a reminder how to tell your right hand from your left hand. You do this, and the one that makes the L is your left hand. Okay? I told this to my nine-year-old, and he said, no, they both make a left. I'm like, no, 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 no. You do this. Don't do this. Do this. You only do this. This is your left hand. So first, get your right hand. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of right-hand rules, but they're almost always the same. Something is turning and something is straight. So it's always your fingers are turning and your thumb is the straight thing. So in this case, the way to get omega is have your fingers go with the thing that's turning. Have your fingers go with the uniform circular motion and your thumb will be in the direction of omega. Okay? This is why counterclockwise is positive. It's because of your right hand, because we use a right hand rule. If we use left hand rule, uh, clockwise would be positive, but clocks are backwards. Right hand rule says fingers go around uh, with the, the speed, go around the circular motion, omega is out. So omega is a vector, and if we wanted to specify it as a vector then, we could say this is the magnitude, and it's out of the, out of the plane. And now that's specific for this case. The way we drew this, omega is out of the page. So keep in mind, omega really is a vector. Even though a lot of problems you do may just want the magnitude, it is a vector.